this is a role play event. This is different than the events that we have on uh, the different days. Uh, role play events are when the members of the audience, the viewers who had submitted a character and have a character on the roster, um, they are able to submit actions for their character. Um, and this is so that they can have some control being that their character is now in the chaos of the game. Anything can happen. This little moment, this role play event is an opportunity to get some control and do something fun with your character. And um, I'm going to look at everyone's submitted actions. And then I'm going to tie them all together into a scene. Starting with the player of Verdane the Veiled. Verdane will take to her usual corner spot to put on a shadow puppetry performance. She will, t oh yeah, so it, this is this is a role play event that I'm, I was just, this is, this is a simple role play event. Essentially, the tavern owner, the barkeep, Genevieve, has said today, free drinks, free drinks. And um, the the group had just got over a couple a couple intense sessions of research and study. Um, so the barkeep opened up the bar, free drinks. This role play event is that evening. What are your char What is your character doing? Um, and anyone who's interested um, would submit their actions including myself, I already decided that my action is going to be to um, try to stay focused because I personally don't feel safe with, with with the threat looming not too far from here, you know, a spot adjacent to um, our home location. Um, and I think the idea of everybody, you know, not staying on their on their uh, on their toes is kind of counterproductive to the threat. Let's celebrate after. So my my action is to try to. I understand the morale is important, so I'm just going to try to you know make sure things don't get out of hand because we have a few characters um, that are a bit wacko. I'm also going to be including uh, Myron, Towart. Uh, and the artist in here as well. They are NPCs. Um, these are NPCs uh, that have their own personalities, and we're going to see how that fits into the dynamic. Let's take a look at our first submission, Verdane. Verdane the Veiled, our rogue witch. Verdane will take to her usual corner spot to put on a shadow puppetry performance. She will tell the story of a pair of twins who waged war over the master plane long ago. The twins were separated at birth and raised by different factions. One became the chief of a large coastal village while the other became the leader of a nomadic warrior clan. The nomadic group posed an obstacle to the expansion of the village's mercantile trading, resulting in an ensuing war. When the twins met on the battlefield, they realized their true identities, but it was too late to stop the war. Both were, s both were slain in the battle, and the war fizzled without their leadership. Now, is this a tale? Is this, is this actual lore? Um, I guess we'll have to wait and find out if we actually you know, discover these things. Um, you know, who knows what we're doing? Who knows what Renee knows? Do people believe this? Can, can, can characters take this as fact? Or is it just a tale? And it's just meant to be fun. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. But this is a tale that Verdane plans to tell with her shadow puppetry. We do know Verdane has a skill of being able to manipulate the shadows, not to mistake that with magic. We'll call it something that Verdane knows how to do. Um, Typically, every ability of your character, for those who have who are waiting or have decided to sit back and are going to make a character, um, I don't really put any a lot of limits on what abilities you can submit for your character, but one thing I do want to express is that it has to be a skill. It's something that you learned and something that can be taught. Um, so that that is the only really limiting factor 
is that it's some it's a knowledge based talent that you have um and if it's not submitted that way we'll, we'll, we'll make it work she learned the means of, of manipulating shadow shadows um and we can dive into that as well you know when we learn more about verdain artorius artorius will offer an ear to those that need to vent complain or shoulder to cry on. he will listen to plans being made and offer his assistance in all these matters when he has done this if it is possible artorius will attempt to lift the spirits of the party and bring them closer together by purchasing their drinks and food out of his own pocket all oh, artorius 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 strong diligent and humble here to assist and guide All right. Maven. Maven. Because of his promise to the bow. Because of his promise to the bow, Maven would see if he can learn the whereabouts of Rydak, asking around if anyone knows where he is or when he plans to return to the end next time. He won't act until the both of them are alone and he is in instinctive he is instinctively alone and he instinctively feels he has the advantage mm. aside from that maven will be in his company of unfortunate of unfortunate discussing new information and ideas on how to take the take down the hatred imbued living stone i think he i think this person is saying in, with the company of the the, the rest of the, the party our, our poor unfortunate souls because we're about to die we're doomed essentially if we don't take out this creature so i think he's talking about he's going to be with the rest of the party aside from uh, keep, keeping an eye out and trying to figure out the whereabouts of Rydak. i like this because we get to push that storyline a bit further that is now a plot on our plot thread um the um this 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 cursed object maven is in possession of that he he has learned how to harness or vice versa um it it has uh it has a debt that maven needs to pay to it and that it, uh, maven has a debt and that is to fulfill a promise of destroying rydak because the bow is insane the bow is very uh seems cursed <laughs> and we're going to use this as a, a way to build some characters and um don't worry this is not going to be pvp um but it can have a negative effect if things don't go right we'll find a way to make it interesting of course i'm not opposed to killing anyone but it will never be a character flat out just killing another character um unless it's unless it's really unless that would be fun but no because then you would have to create another character and i rather that i rather us not do that i want all, every player who decides to submit a character has one character in the story and they only need to focus on that character we are building out characters we're building out a world and i'm not going to be destroying any location so i'm not going to be destroying any characters either um okay so Maven, I like I like what Maven is thinking. I like what Maven is doing. That's very well. That is very much in Maven's character. Maven uh, is impulsive, quiet, and cynical. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind too. The way he's going about it, um, he's really short. <laughs> all right, um, and then we have all right. So Towart, okay, Towart. We know Towar to be um, insane. Let me see. Did I ever update her character sheet to match the new way? If you recall, when I created Towar along with the journeyman, who, I, who I've since converted to the new style, um, I created them with like a full mythic, mythic uh, character sheet. 
Um, but I went, I, I shifted gears to a simpler method and uh, which is three abilities that you're really good at. Same as y'all's. We know Toart's personality. If you, if you don't remember, she is a woman of paradoxes, a whip wielding ruler turned conqueror, a leader who delights in causing the downfall of the innocent. Her mind is sharp and her, and her will is iron, but her heart is blackened by a desire for power and control and so on and so forth. She's a master manipulator, able to bend others to her will with ease. Her body is as agile as a panther, but her reflexes are dulled by her insatiable thirst for violence. She is a fierce and intimidating presence, striking fear into the hearts of her enemies and her allies alike. Her intelligence is matched only by her toughness, making her a formidable opponent in any battle. She is a liar, a betrayer, and a destroyer, but of all else, she is a survivor, willing to do whatever it takes to get what she wants. Her name is known and feared throughout the master plane, for she is the embodiment of chaos and destruction. Toward has been nerfed because she embodies those personality aspects, right? But uh, we had to narrow it down to three of her abilities. Maybe not a nerf, but exceptional, her exceptional ability out of all those great things toughness i felt that this was an important piece of her because you know she was intimidating and you can't she's imposing and and she's she has a lot of courage and that's probably because she knows she can't be put down easily that's scary when it's someone that you know you know people who can't be hurt are very intimidating so i felt that exceptional toughness would be the core of her and then for her high ability intimidation cherry on the top intimidation that was a piece of her um, imposing force it was the combination of her being very intimidating and and tough so she can back it up which is frightening and then above average combat she uses a whip but her above average skill is combat because she can probably rumble as well. She's so tough and intimidating. Um, but combat. The whip wielding ruler turned conqueror. So Toart is in here. And for Toart, um, I already rolled it in the future. I can I can roll it live, but I already rolled it. I rolled indulge location. Frantically plain. And I interpret that as wherever she's at, she's indulging. She's enjoying it. She is deep in it. So she's probably drinking a lot. You know, maybe she's indulging in the free drinks. She's always trying to get a drink or something, right? I guess maybe we learned today that she's a drunk. She's indulging in... in the fun that's being had but toward having fun that, that should be interesting frantically playing frantically playing i'm gonna wait and see the rest of everyone else before i roll the rest of before i interpret that and i and i do myron um who will be here as well and the artist um which we will roll because i forgot about him and we will roll him live let me get that ready Pulling up. Next, we have Liz Drea, a rogue archer. What is she doing? What is Liz Drea doing? Well, Liz Drea says tavern games. Using their, her natural charisma to strike up conversations, share stories, and assess potential loyalties. Um, her luck will help her capitalize on the loose lipped patrons and gather information that might be useful in the future. Use this to strike up some gambling and games of, cho of games of chance uh, and have an edge on those games uh, and maybe catch a pickpocket or two. So she's just straight up being your rogue's rogue um, in here, taking advantage of this, this social occasion. Um, okay. Then uh, we have our... Did I do our Taurus? Yeah, I started with our Taurus. Me, um, again, I'm going to try to 
just make sure people don't get too crazy. Um, I'm gonna try to plan a little bit more with Artorius and Towart because I think they need to. I gotta make sure that you know they're a front line and they're and they're on this. We're all on the same page. So I'm gonna talk it up, but then not too serious. We're gonna relax. Um. Um. Try to keep uh, Toe Art and you know from drinking herself to, to being rendered useless tomorrow if we need her. Which I think this this is terrible timing for the bar for us. So I don't know what Genevieve was thinking, but it's a morale thing. It's a morale thing. Um, you know I think we'll have we'll have Artorius lean into that. He said he is when he gets a chance he wants to treat everyone and raise morale. So me and him will probably have a discussion about that. Um, and then Maven. Maven, uh, he's going to be talking with his, us, us as well, as well as uh, trying to look for Rydak. Now, Rydak, um, I haven't seen the Faceless Samurai. Have you seen the, the have you, has, not even a lot of people has, have, have seen the Faceless Samurai. So, I don't know if Maven's going to have any luck finding Rydak tonight, but Maven is going to get information. We got we to gotta finish interpreting Towart. We gotta roll my we gotta um interpret Myron because I got rolls for Myron as well. Alright, so Towart in Dodge location, frantically playing. She's drinking. Okay, we know that much now is how I'm going to interpret that. I still have control of what's interpreted. At the end of the day, we're playing mythic, and that's the fun of it. I am in, I'm saying that Towart is indulging in in drink. Frantically playing. We know she gets mad and she's not a big fan of Genove. She's probably complaining and mad that she's drinking the regular stuff while Verdane has the good stuff. You know, Verdane over there making having making damn shadow puppets. I want what she's drinking. Why is she drinking the you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so we're gonna go with that. And and uh Myron, I rolled start value, start value, and then the description threatening threateningly faded threateningly faded when i saw um let's myron right let's just just to recap on who myron is because i have an idea for myron myron The mysterious and otherworldly woman is an enigma wrapped in tattered robes. Marin, this mysterious and otherworldly woman is an enigma wrapped in tattered robes adorned with eerie symbols and motifs, carrying a large leather bound book, leather bound book under her arm. Her appearance is scholarly, yet her piercing gaze and air of mystery instills unease in those around her. Her gaunt pale complexion and deep set eyes add to her eerie presence. Her mind is consumed by her disturbing desire to unearth and collect all manner of illness, plagues and diseases. She is an elite scavenger hailing from the bleak corner of the master plane with a knack for discovering and collecting the most obscure and grotesque specimens. She is not afraid to employ the most unsavory and disgusting medical practices in her pursuit of knowledge. Despite her frail and feeble body, her mind is sharp and her intuition high. Her movements are lethargic and slow, but her wild hair adds to her unkept appearance. She speaks with, she speaks with eloquent with eloquence however her outgoing personality is marred by her disturbing nature she's driven by her own luck oh yeah she's also lucky aware of its power and is willing to take risks even if it means putting herself in dangerous situations she is occasionally dominated by a disturbed alter ego which leads her to make questionable decisions but she is always aware of the of the risks and willing to take them she is a survivor ready for any situation that may arise it, it only makes sense that she is having a, a, a battle of luck with uh 
the battle of luck with uh, Listrea. And the fact that it also, that I also rolled threateningly faded, she's probably inebriated, she's probably inebriated, and um, her alter ego is out. And her, and I rolled start value. So I can interpret that as she was, she's winning, and then uh, she's winning. She's get, she's making some she's making some money, but then I can interpret threateningly faded as she starts to lose that money. So I think it would make sense if it's a back and forth, and then we'll roll an axe mythic to see who would who would who will uh, defeat who in a matter of luck. So in my head, I have what I see this scene. Uh, how this scene is going to happen, and essentially, Chat GPT in the in the context of Mythic is essentially an alter is is using altered scene because I'm going to tell Chat GPT how I interpret what's going to happen, um, but I'm going to leave enough open for there to be more variants, and you know it'll be a fleshed out scene. But I'm going to tell it what I'm expecting, and Chat GPT is going to tell me what happens while also factoring in the the you know the 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 modifications and the, the details of personality um and it's going to tell me what happens but i know that verdane is telling a story we'll probably end with verdane telling um, the puppet show so we can dive into that and we can everyone can that, that can raise spirits uh we're going to have make sure we're going to have maven um, you know, work with everyone else discussing plans while also looking out for Rydak. I think what's going to be interesting is Artorius is looking to um, is looking to uh, be a to to be to guide and be a shoulder and support. I, I think. He would be a good candidate to we'll probably have him be trying to, you know, guide Maven and be a support for Maven, which Maven probably wouldn't want. Um, but maybe that'll be an opportunity for another character to get with to get game game intelligence of the fact that he's looking for Rydak. We could have Lizdrea even get that information from him. Maybe she's following him while she's, you know, be getting involved with everyone in her tavern games. Um, and then I'm going to definitely be with Artorias talking um, and with Towart. Um, and yeah, so let's, let's see, let's see. Uh, ah, the artist we'll, we'll roll for the artist we're going to roll the actions the action and the actions description for the artist using the mythic phone app the mythic phone app ladies and gentlemen you can find this on the android store for sure. I don't know if it's on iOS yet, but it's definitely on the Android store. All right. We are going to roll. On some meeting tables, the artist's action is going to be bargain bureaucracy bargain bureaucracy. Hmm. And then description. And let's get a description for that. That'll really steer us in the right direction. Helpfully amusing. 
helpfully amusing. The artist is a wandering artist draped in somber garments, reflecting their affinity for the darker aspects of life. Possessing a depth of character and strong moral compass, they create hauntingly beautiful works of art. The enigmatic figure, armed with an array of meticulously arranged tools, captivates those who cross their path in their melodic voice and captivating presence. Bargaining bureaucracy. Suggesting a bureaucracy approach. Helpfully amusing. I'm going to interpret that as he is. Suggesting that Geneve runs sets officials like an official structure for the bar you know if we all don't die maybe we should set up a structure as we're getting more we're, you know we're getting more rogues let's get a structure a bureaucracy let's turn this tavern into something more than just a tavern um, but he's also being funny and amusing um, and he's entertaining and everybody's drinking so we get to see some personality from um, the artist. In Genovese's bustling, dimly lit tavern, the air thick with anticipation, Marin's slender fingers danced across the table, unveiling her cards with deliberate slowness. Listraya, a master of composure, felt the weight of impending defeat settle upon her. How had fortune favored Marin so? With an imperturbable poker face, Lis goaded Marin, enticing her to go all in, pushing every last coin and a few wriggling maggots to the center of the table. A wry smile graced Liss's lips as she played her hand, triumphantly placing a seven-stacked silent magician atop her cards, a move that shattered Marin's hopes, obliterating her chances of victory. The spoils of an hour's worth of painstaking progress slipped through Marin's desperate grasp. Her eyes twitched, a telltale sign of her unraveling composure as the brew coursing through her blood fought against her sanity. The insidious whispers of her alter ego clawed at the edges of her consciousness. A sudden shift overcame Marin, her demeanor twisting into something deranged and unsettling. She leaned toward Listria, her voice dripping with madness as she whispered a repulsive alchemical formula into her ear. A macabre secret, too grotesque to utter aloud. Caught off guard by Marin's terrifying transformation, Listrea swiftly collected her winnings, slipping away from the rambling lunatic, making her way toward the rest of the group. Lis joined them just as Artorias proposed the idea of a group meditation session, seeking solace before their imminent confrontation of the hatred imbued Livingstone. Toward, fueled by the spirits coursing through her, vehemently disagreed, her words dripping with fierce, undeniable logic, slowly turning Artorias to her side. With seething anger, Toward shouts, You propose we surrender to tranquility, that we immerse ourselves in some ethereal realm, detached from the harsh reality that awaits us. I say nay. However, their debate was abruptly interrupted by the journeyman. He lectured toward, and anyone else lost in their intoxication, reminding them of the vulnerability they exposed themselves to while the enemy lurked in the shadows, poised to strike at any moment. Furious toward leaped onto the table, sweeping her foot through the air, knocking over mugs and ale in a storm of anger. She launched into a tirade about the injustice of Verdun's privileged access to top-shelf brew, and criticizing everyone for placing their trust in a witch who refused to reveal her true face. 
The artist, never one to shy away from adding fuel to the fire, voiced his disagreement with Tewart, declaring that the tavern needed a governing body to enforce order. He suggested that Tewart be banned from the establishment. A fiery exchange of words erupted between Tewart and the artist, but their conflict was restrained by the journeyman and Lys Drea, who we see liberating trinkets from Tewart's pockets. Meanwhile, Artorius, ever the empathetic soul, attempted to support Maven in his troubled state, reaching out with concern. Maven shrugged off Artorius's attempt, his troubled gaze panning the room for the faceless samurai. He posed the question of his whereabouts with haunting curiosity, but Artorius, suspicious of Maven's sudden fixation, denied any knowledge of such a figure. Seeking to quell the brewing tension and lift the group's spirits, Artorius, in a display of benevolence, announced rounds of Genevieve's finest brew for all in the tavern. Give him hooray! Give him hooray! Give him hooray! This act of kindness brought a temporary respite, appeasing the collective, even though the journeyman frown upon indulgence during such uncertain times. He understood that the well-being and happiness of the group held paramount importance in fostering camaraderie and unity. As if a predestined cue, the candles scattered throughout the tavern simultaneously flickered and died, plunging the room into darkness. Suddenly, amidst the eerie silence, Verdane the Veiled materialized in the center, bathed in the flickering glow of the fireplace. With her supernatural talent to manipulate light and shadow, Verdine called forth ethereal tendrils that cascaded from the hearth, transforming the entire room into an immersive projection of dancing shades and luminosity. The audience found themselves spellbound as Verdane's nimble fingers orchestrated a breathtaking display of shadow puppetry. The air crackled with anticipation as vivid flashes of light and shadow unfolded, painting a mesmerizing tableau. The tragic tale began to unfurl, a tale of twin siblings raised by rival factions, unwittingly drawn into a cataclysmic war for dominion over the master plane. Only in the final moments did the twins discover their true identities. Their reunion, cloaked in sorrow as their destinies collided amidst the chaos of battle. The haunting narrative wove its way into the hearts of the onlookers, leaving them contemplative, their emotions raw, and their minds burdened with the weight of the siblings' fateful journey. As the audience teetered on the precipice of applause, a gust of eerie wind battered against the tavern doors, thrusting them open with a creak of ancient hinges. <laughs> In the distance, to the south of the tavern, a chilling sight awaited their eyes. The malevolent, living stone, imbued with a palpable aura of anticipation, stood ominously closer than it had been the day before. Five more days until your fate is tested on the master plane, 